Hello, in this tutorial I plan to show how to use Digital Photo Professional to edit a night photo. As you can see in this shot, we have some glare from glass in the window right here. To start with, we want to remove this. And we do so by using Canon Digital Photo Professional's uh, stamp tool. Go in, wait for it to load, which can take up to you know 10 seconds, let it load, and once it loads, you click on the 100% view button located in the upper right. As you can see, there's a lot of digital noise and whatnot in this photo as well. So here's our problem area, some window glare. We use a radius of 40 so that the brush is large enough to cover the problem area in one stroke. And then we hit select copy source, which is choosing where we want to copy from to replace this area. So I choose right over here. I'm clicking and dragging and now we have our brush and we can just paint right over the area that's the problem and when we're satisfied with the way it looks we can just hit OK. Now it won't show up on the photo here but when you go to save it the changes will be there. Another issue that you can see right here in this photo is our white balance adjustment. We used the as camera shot so using the Canon XSI we were able to get this shot but we can choose to change our lighting however we'd like to do so to, to get an effect that we prefer I personally don't like the way this looks and I'm gonna cycle through these and just see what else is out there and I noticed that when I pull up a tungsten lighting this looks a lot more natural to me and looks appropriate so I'll cycle through the rest just to see what different options there are, but I know that this tungsten is what looks good to me. Now, a few other adjustments that I can make are picture styles. I can make more contrast depending on which I choose. I'm going to go with landscape, and then we can play around, add some contrast in, we can add some saturation in to bring more color into the shot. And now, a lot of people like to look at their photos at 100% these days. And while it's not really necessary to do so because when you print your photos, you never look at them at 100%, it does give some type of satisfaction to a lot of users out there to know what their photos are looking at at 100%. Once you've gone into 100% and your camera and DPP has loaded it, you have to give it a minute and then it will sharpen up. You can now see the difference that the different sharpening settings have. When we have a sharpness of zero, everything looks a little bit softer. It's still, you're still able to read the text here, make things out, but, and the noise is a little bit less as well. But when you increase your sharpness, things get a little bit clearer. You can see right there, if you pay attention to the windows, right over here, you'll see them sharpening up. So we'll go back to zero softening. One, two, three. And then we're getting to a point where it's over sharpened now. And while you're looking at it at 100%, it looks very sharp and that's great. But it's really not necessary to do this because again, you're never going to view your photos at this, this size. And even at 50%, you can see how this has affected the image quality. It actually doesn't look very good to have sharpened it so much. So I typically use a sharpness of 3 on my photos. I find it's a good balance between sharpening and image quality and not making the photo look over-processed. And we can still read text. and it's just a good overall setting that doesn't introduce too much noise into your shot. And again, I'll just show you, even at looking at a photo like this, when you have zero, you can kind of tell, but sharpening does help a little bit, adds some contrast, and going up to 10 would just be too much. Just It might look a little bit clearer, but it just looks over-processed, and it's just too much for my taste. So another issue that I want to resolve is getting rid of some of the digital noise in this shot. Now when you use noise reduction, you're automatically going to 
be softening your image a little bit because everything is gets a little blended, a little blurred. And that's just the downside of using noise reduction. So I'm going to go ahead and apply levels of 7 and 7. Wait for the program to process. And when we're done, as you can see now, the image has softened up slightly. However, the sky no longer appears to be all pixelated, and everything appears softer, but there's it's smoother and there's less noise in the shot. If that's a concern of yours, that's a great way to get rid of it. If you felt like it was too much, you can always pull it down. If you, there's a good balance that you can always find, and you can play around with it, and you can find a balance between the sharpness of your photo and then removing noise if you find that there's too much noise. As you can see, that just brought in some additional sharpness again but it also introduced more noise once I lowered the levels back down again. If I put them up to four, you'll see a softening of the subject matter, but you also have a removal of the noise. And this really is only matters had a full resolution viewing. And again, that's mostly online viewing, on computer screen viewing. When you go to print your photos, you're never going to make it at a print size large enough to be able to really see the difference and know the difference. So, Noise reduction can be really helpful when you have an underexposed photo or in different types of settings like a portrait, but in a scene like this it's not really that big of a deal. So this is a good balance right here. I'm pretty happy with that. And now that I'm done taking it, I like the way it looks. I like the colors. All I have to do is output it and once we output you'll see that this area right here this problem area the glare is gone and everything else as is as you see it here so i hope that helps in processing your images and helps you find the sharpness that you're wanting to find with your xsi